So today we're going to be going over the Bruin MK9. I'm not typically an LMG type of person, but once I was able to actually use this gun, you know what? I felt like I had to share this class setup with you guys because I know there's a lot of you guys who actually really like the Bruin. So today we're actually going to be featuring an overkill class setup. But before we get into the class setup, can we hit a like goal of 500 likes? I know we can hit that like goal. You guys have been absolutely smashing the like goals lately. And make sure to subscribe if you are new around here and you want to see more class setup videos, gameplay breakdowns, etc. Make sure to subscribe join turbo nation today make it official so for the attachments we're going to go with the monolithic suppressors so this is going to help us stay as stealthy as we possibly can when we're firing our weapon enemies won't be able to see our location on the compass and it also does add a bit of damage range as well we don't have anything for barrel most of your engagements are going to be well within 30 meters anyway so you know if you take a look at the cons here there's cons of aim down sight speed movement speed aim down sight speed as well as bullet velocity and recoil control you know all of these things like we can mitigate these negatives however it's it's not worth it at the cost of your movement speed and aim down side speed and multiplayer because the multiplayer it's a fast-paced game mode so you want to optimize the ads and movement speed as much as you possibly can so for the stock we're going to be running with no stock yes i already know it did get nerfed in the last mid-season update the bruin is amazingly easy to control that recoil and even with the no stock attachment it's still easy to control for the rear grip we're going to be using stippled grip tape again we're trying to maximize our mobility as much as we possibly can so for the ammunition this one is the most important attachment especially for multiplayer you're going to want to run the 60 round magazine it gives us a pro of aim down sight speed sprint to fire movement and the detachable magazine so this is going to be huge you're going to notice a significant improvement in your mobility and like i said we're going to need that in multiplayer and with 60 rounds 60 rounds is more than enough in multiplayer as well you don't really need to worry about reloading your weapon often because of the 60 round mags and the fact that it's 556 ammunition you're going to be able to find that ammo all around the map because a lot of people they're running m4s so it's very common to find so for the last attachment we got a merc 4 grip now i know i said the recoil control is fairly easy to control but with the merc 4 grip you could add that extra amount of insurance if you want to so this is an optional attachment if you want to run this it's going to give us a lot more recoil control from distance and that hip fire accuracy from up close now the secret boost that this attachment actually gives you is more movement speed and that's mainly the reason why i'm running the merc 4 grip if you don't want to run the merc 4 grip you could always easily remove the under barrel and you can put on like a laser like the tack laser if you want to or you can put on an optic if you so choose to but beware this is going to make your aim down sight speed just a tad bit slower personally i think the iron sights are just okay on the bruin all right so for the secondary we're going to be running with the uzi with the bruin just being so slow you need something to compensate for that for close quarter combat situations and multiplayer so that's why we're running with the uzi and that's when you want to pull it out so for the muzzle we're running monolithic suppressor fss carbine pro and the stock is going to be no stock and the ammunition is going to be the 41 AE 32 round mags and the underbarrel is going to be the Mark 4 grip. All right, so for the perks, so this is a bit of a different setup. Now, the reason why I'm running Specialist on this, particularly with the fact that we're running the Uzi as a secondary thanks to this overkill perk for our number two slot, we're not limited to playing with just one playstyle. We can actually still rush around the map comfortably if we need to, and that's why we're running overkill. So for the first perk, it's gonna be EOD. Second perk is gonna be overkill. Third perk is gonna be tracker. And for our two kills, we're gonna be running hardline so that at our fourth kill, we're able to get ghost because that's very important. You wanna get ghost right away. And then six kills, we're going to get restock so we can replenish our equipment. And then at seven kills, you are going to unlock all the perks in the game. Now, for the next portion of the video, I am going to be breaking down a gameplay of me using this exact same class setup. And I'm also going to be giving a few pointers of my decision making, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And you will definitely learn something from it as well. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys in the gameplay. Peace. All right. So here we are. We're playing on hard hat. And since I just spawned on this side of the map, I'm just going to immediately get into my strategy, which is going to be sticking to the outskirts of the map. You know, hard hat is a bit of a square type of map, so it's really easy to navigate. And I'm not going to be playing too aggressive here because obviously I'm using an LMG. You have to keep that in mind. This is not meant for running and gunning, which is why I'm using my Uzi as a secondary for a close quarter combat situation to make up for the lack of ADS speed that I have. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to approach this ledge and I'm just going to watch my back because... 
you know, it's just instinct. You know, it's not because I knew there was going to be an enemy there. It's because I'm looking at my mini map. You know, let me pause it real quick. If you look at my mini map, all my teammates are on this end of the map. And I do have one teammate here with me. And that's a very rare occasion, by the way. And when my teammates are on the opposite side of the map, there's most likely going to be one or two enemies who are going to be wandering off on their own. It's always a good idea to check your back. And you're also most likely going to come across enemies with their backs turned behind you. That's right. That's what it's called a flank. So that's why I'm watching my back in the very beginning of my gameplays i always like to play a little bit more reserved because i want to get a feel for the opponent see how they play and then i make my adjustments accordingly so right here they throw this flash at me so i'm going to use this little tractor trailer whatever you call it as my cover and i'm looking at the mini map and the reason why i was able to get up in that situation because i saw that my two teammates were here so that means that they cleaned up the whole situation and there's nothing to worry about anymore so now I'm going to be pre-aiming down the middle part of the map and I'm kind of assessing where I should go right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, escort my teammate here and then I'm going to quickly turn left and I'm going to try to inhabit areas that are not currently being inhabited by teammates. So as you can see here, I was able to get a really nice flank and that's what I'm talking about. Enemies, they're not going to be suspecting you. These dudes, like, let's just rewind this 10 seconds. Bam, this guy didn't know I was there. You know, it's all about placement and positioning. And these two enemies for sure had no idea that I was there. So it was a pretty easy kill. And that's my play style. I like to flank. Flanking is all about the element of surprise. And you accomplish that by sticking to the outskirts of the map and straying away from your teammates. All right. So that was a really good kill right there. So let me just back it up just a couple seconds. I need to explain this because this is also very important. All right. So from this point on, look at where my teammates are going. They're all going this way, right? So if you want to be a good teammate, especially if you're playing solo, if you take a look, they're all going this direction. All right. So let's just consider that a lane number one, right? So I'm going to occupy this lane right here. I'm covering more ground because if I were to go with my team, the enemy that was running across down this way that I just killed, he's going to know that we're all here. And guess what? He gets an easy quad feed. So that's why you have to play smart. Always keep an eye on that mini map. See where your teammates are going. That way you're covering more ground and you're leaving less of an opportunity for the enemies to kill you. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn around because like I said, you don't want to bunch up with your teammates all the time. You want to cover more ground and I'm filling these lanes correctly. As you can see, I came across one of those quote unquote stragglers or strays that I like to call it. So my teammate is going down this way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a peek down this tunnel. Why? Because I don't have teammates around me right here. They're all busy in this area. So I want to catch enemies that are coming down through this line of sight. So that's why I'm going to pre-aim here momentarily. And then I'm going to keep an eye on that mini map as well as I'm doing this because I want to see if my teammates are dying. All right. So if you take a look at that mini map, look at this little guy, this little blue triangle. Just watch that. I'm watching the mini map too. As I'm watching what's in front of me, he disappeared. All right. So that's my cue. I'm like, okay, I need to investigate this situation. I pull out the Uzi for the close quarter combat situations. I pre-aim before I go out into the area. So I'm ready for those gunfights. I decided to pull out the Bruin so I could take advantage of that three shot kill. All right, so now I'm going to rotate. I'm going to keep rotating. I pop on my dead talents. I slowly peek around the corner. There's nothing there, so I'm going to keep going. And notice how I approach this little cement cylinder here. I don't go inside. The reason why I go outside is so that I can use this as cover, and it gives me more of a buffer between any unexpected enemies that could possibly be there. So this will serve as my cover, and that's why I move on the outside versus on the inside. So... Again, little details. Teammates moving on the outside right here. So that's my cue. I'm going to move on the inside, cover more ground. All right, so I'm going to see what my teammate does. Someone's shooting at my teammate. All right, so he loses that gunfight. So I'm going to pre-aim to get ready for that gunfight. All right, I'm also checking my surroundings. I see him pop up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to retreat. You know, you don't have to always challenge every single person that shoots at you. You know, it's called being passive aggressive. That's a really good example right there. So now I've got better positioning. I'm using this at a huge advantage right here. And I'm also watching my left just to make sure there's no enemies. And there was one right there. So I come back to my original spot. I take out two enemies already so far. There's one more guy I know. And I don't think he could see me here through this nasty head glitch. And that results in an easy kill. All right, so I'm going to retreat here once again because you never want to stay in the same spot after you farm a little bit of kills. Best believe they're going to be coming back and rushing you. So that was a good example right there. Teammate actually stole my kill. So, but that's all right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep retreating. I'm going to let my teammate hold down that area while I check out other areas of the spot that is not covered by my teammates. So I'm slowly pre-aiming in here. I'm using that movement to my advantage by sliding and slide canceling. 
See how I'm not playing too aggressive? You got to remember, we're using an LMG here. So that's why, again, using dead silence when you have it is very important when you're in areas where you're all alone. So I do hear this guy's footsteps. That was an easy kill. And that's why dead silence is a massive, massive advantage when you do have it. And also the movement as well. Back earlier, about 10 seconds ago, I was using my slide cancel mechanic. And that's how I was able to kill the guy in that tunnel. So again, I'm rotating around the map. Why am I rotating here? Because look at where my teammates are. They're all over here. So that must mean that the enemies are going to be in this area that I'm trying to approach. So I also do see this guy right here, and I'm going to try to take him out. Unfortunately, I missed my shots. So I'm going to come up here, switch to my Uzi, slowly go up the stairs. And, you know, I had the right idea there, but this guy just had better positioning. You know, he immediately went to the corner. I didn't expect him to be there. And, you know, those things happen, you know, and if that happens to you, you know, don't be discouraged about it. Those things do happen. You can't expect to go flawless every time. So my teammate just died right in front of me. I see this guy in the tunnel. I decided to challenge him right there and give him a bit of a combo of a drop shot as well. So there's more enemies there. There were two enemies. So I said, you know what? It's not worth challenging. So I'm going to back up a little bit and I'm going to retreat and I'm just going to rotate around the map. So again, take a look at where my teammates are. They're, they're all in the area where I was just at. That's why I'm prompted to flank around the other side of the map so that I can get the easier kills because all those enemies are just focused on my teammates. So I get flashed here. So, you know, don't panic when you get flashed. Just move away from the situation. You know, at that point, it's a 50 50. Either you die or you survive. So here's a really good example of a bit of a finesse. So this guy that was approaching this car, best believe we both saw each other. But look what I do here. I've got my Bruin. And this is why I use the, the Uzi. This is why I really highly recommend using the Uzi. So at this point, he thinks I'm going to go right, right? <laughs> no, I go left. Bam. Easy money right there. So another thing that you do have to be conscious of when you're using this class setup, especially with this perk setup, is the fact that, you know, you get your ghost in four kills. So the reason why I'm using hardline here is because overkill is my main perk for my slot number two. So that's how I'm able to use the Uzi right off the bat. So for those who are wondering why I'm running hardline as my first perk, that's why. So here I'm using this head glitch to my advantage. I'm going to try to challenge these guys. Unfortunately, they use those flashes. Flashes are very good. I try to so throw my C4 in hopes that I'm going to get the guy that's rushing me because it's only natural for somebody to rush you when they've got you flashed. So I threw my C4, but unfortunately, I missed my throw. So back to what I was saying about the perks, it's very important to get your ghost right away. So, you know, you get your ghost in about four kills. So if the enemy is calling in UAVs, you're pretty much in a bad spot. My teammate just died in front of me. I killed the guy that killed him. And unfortunately, the dude had a teammate that was with him escorting him. So, uh, yeah. So every time I spawn in, I'm always looking at that mini map and I make my adjustments accordingly. You know, again, I'm here all alone on the other side of the map. Here's another great example of a great finesse move right there. I'm just going to replay that. He thinks I'm going right. Oop, faked him out. I went left. So remember, get in the habit of pulling out the Uzi in close quarter combat situations such as that. And I'm going to pre-aim down this line of sight. Not because I knew he was there, but because it's always good to, you know, have that extra insurance just in case there is an enemy that pops up. It's just simple as that. So what I'm going to do now is just going to make sure that both my weapons are reloaded. I'm going to pop on my dead silence so that nobody hears my footsteps. I'm here all alone, by the way. Look at that minimap once again. All right, I'm going to pre-aim down this line of sight. I see a couple enemies here. I'm getting ready to stim shot. Be mindful of your equipment and use that stim shot. I know this guy's chasing me. I turn around right away and I switched back to my Uzi. Let's watch that again one more time here. So watch very closely. I swiftly look to my left. Bam, right there. He was right there. So that's how I knew I need to get to cover right away. And I'm going to place myself right here. I'm going to get ready for that gunfight. I'm going to turn around, slide cancel. Bam easy money that's mainly one of the reasons why i decided to up my sensitivity and try to get used to a higher sensitivity so i'm currently running a seven and a seven so right now that feels very good for me i think it's perfect for most situations and that's about it that's about it for the end of the gameplay you know hopefully you did learn something about how to use this exact same class setup you know you have to keep in mind do not play aggressive when you've got the bruin as your primary you have to be a little passive aggressive you know that ads you got to keep that in mind so Leave the Uzi or whatever your secondary choice is that you prefer to those close quarter combat situations and you'll be just fine. And use the Uzi to move around the map faster as well. But always remember to be conscious of those engagements that you're about to get into. So anyways, guys, we finished off with 24 kills, three deaths. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys did learn something. Make sure to drop a like if you did. Shows me that this is the kind of content that you want to continue to see. Make sure to subscribe if you are new around here. 
Make sure you join Turbo Nation today. We are now at 120,000 subscribers. Can't thank you guys enough for the support. And by the way, my merch is available until July 19th. After July 19th, that is it. No more. You cannot buy my merch anymore. So make sure you check the link down below in the description and go copy some Turbo Nation merch and show that support. All right, you guys have a good day. Peace. Yo, to celebrate 100,000 subscribers, I'm officially announcing my first ever merch drop is now available between July 9th to July 19th. You got 10 days to cop this exclusive merch this is a limited drop and will never be seen again if you've been rocking with me for the longest or you just became a huge supporter take your allegiance to turbo nation one step further and represent by grabbing you a turbo nation t hoodie crew neck available in all sizes different colors and as a thank you i will personally shout you out if you take a picture with my merch on and tag me either on twitter instagram or discord cop it now before you never see it again